Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. Salar Khan here. And today we see about the classification of signals. All right. So let me give the heading. Classification of signals. All right. Now we see what a signal is in a detail. Today we see the various classes of it. So the first and the foremost important, so I will write over here, all right. The first is the continuous and discrete time signals. Continuous and discrete time signals, which we have already seen. All right. The second would be periodic and aperiodic signals, which we will not see in this video. We will see them also in a great detail, maybe in the next video. The third would be energy and power signals. This also we will not see in this video. The fourth that we see today is uh, analog and digital. Digital and analog signals. And the four and the fifth and the last is the deterministic and random signals. And these random are also called as probabilistic signals. So in this video we see digital and analog and deterministic and probabilistic. The next two we see maybe in the next video. All right, so now let me give the heading of digital and analog signal. This is the classification that we see first. Digital and analog. All right. So in digital signal, we have a signal that can only take a finite number of values. Digital signal can only take a finite number of values is that okay whereas the analog signal can take infinite number of values all right an analog signal can take any number of values and I say infinite number of values where as its amplitude all right as its amplitude over here also as its amplitude all right now a confusion that arises is in between the digital and the discrete time signal and the analog and the continuous time signal so to remove that confusion we i will tell you a method that you don't confuse it all right for analog and digital signal consider the amplitude axis all right for digital and analog Consider the amplitude axis. Whereas for continuous and discrete consider the time axis or the vertical axis, the, the horizontal axis. Now I will explain it to you with, with the help of some examples, all right? Let's say, let's say I have a signal like this, x of t. This is t. This is x of t. This is the signal. Now if this is the signal, so first have a look. So this could be, this could not be digital and analog at the same time. This could not be continuous and discrete at the same time. It could be digital continuous. It could be digital discrete. It also could be analog continuous. It could be analog discrete. 
So if you see for the time axis first, continuous and discrete time, consider the time axis. So if you have the time axis available, it is defined for a continuous range. So this means that this is a continuous signal. This is a continuous time. And this is a continuous time. Now if you consider the amplitude axis, so it is again taking an infinite number of values which means it don't have any discontinuity along the vertical axis as well. So this is a continuous time analog signal. Is that fine? Now this is a continuous time analog signal. So I will also give you more examples on this and, and let's, say, let's say I have it like this. The clock pulse. Let's say we have this is a function g of p, let's say. All right. Well, this is not the clock pulse because this has negative values as well. But this is a signal g of t. So have a look for the time axis. The time axis is continuous. The time axis is continuous. For each and every value of time, it has a particular value. So which means that this is a continuous time. This is a continuous time. And have a look for the for the amplitude axis, for the vertical axis. So it is taking only a finite number of values. It is either at this stage or at this stage. So if I name this, let's say, as A, and I name this as negative A, so this is either at the position A or this is at position negative A. So which means that it has only two number of values, which means it has only finite number of values on the amplitude axis. So this is a continuous time digital signal. Is that okay? Continuous time analog signal, continuous time digital signal we have seen. Now, let's say another function is given. Let's say we have a function like this. This is t. This is a function, let's say, u of t. And I draw it as you have this plus 1, you have it minus 1. Plus 1, minus 1. Plus 1, minus 1. Plus 1, minus 1. So let me name this as well. If this is plus 1, this is minus 1. So I have a look for the for the time axis. So this is defined only for discrete values of time. Have a look. For in between it is absent. So which means that this is a discrete time. This is a discrete time. And for the vertical axis, so it's again taking a finite number of values, only plus one and minus one, no values in between. So this is a discrete time digital signal. Is that fine? This is a discrete time digital signal. Now, let, now let me check if I have a discrete time analog. Yes. All right. So let's say the function is like this. This is time, and the function is let's say s of p. So and, and let's say this is like this. All right. So, first have a look for the, for the what? For the x-axis, for the time axis, so it is discrete. It is not defined for any value, it is defined for a particular set of values. So this is a discrete time. And now have a look for the vertical axis. So for the vertical axis, it has many number of different values. We don't have the value over here, but we can check from the naked eye that it is taking as many values as you like. So this is taking an infinite number of values as its amplitude. So this is a discrete time and a log signal. Now I believe that the that the 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 the, con the confusion between the digital signal and the discrete time and the continuous and analog is clear. 
for if for checking that between digital and analog you consider the amplitude axis for checking between the continue or for checking between the continuous and peak screen you check the time axis and that's it that's about the digital and analog signals the next is an easy one uh, the next is about deterministic and probabilistic signals so I will remove this part of it and this would be enough or let's say remove this as well all right so the heading I would give is deterministic and probabilistic or I would say random signal So now what is a deterministic signal which could be determined as the name suggests deterministic signal could be determined for any value so deterministic signal would have a mathematical representation must have a mathematical and graphical representation It must have a mathematical and graphical representation. It is a signal whose values can be predicted because it has a mathematical or graphical representation so you can predict. It is a signal whose values can be predicted. All right. It always has a mathematical equation. All right, that I have already told you. The next point is that it has certainty, right? Because it will have certainty because it has a mathematical representation. It has certainty. I hope the certainty spelling is right. Now, according to information theory, this deterministic signal has the least information. Deterministic. Signal has least information. This is due to the information theory that the more probable a phenomena, the less is the information in it. This is due to the according to the information theory. And what does the information theory say? It says that more probable a phenomena more probability I would say over here more probability implies what less information now for example if you consider the sunrise so I say the sunrise in the east today it has rose in the east tomorrow it would rise in the east yesterday it rose in the east so it is rising in the east I know that it is rising in the east you know it is rising in the east it is a certain value it can be predicted for tomorrow it was true for yesterday so what is the information in it now if I see the Sun will rise in the west tomorrow so this is something now we will shock you up this is some information so now that would be some kind of information that is least probable so least probable has more information more probable has less information this is of this is on the basis of information theory so this is about the deterministic and random signal deterministic you can say the example is a sine wave all right for example the sine wave you can write it yourself now the next is the random signal the next is the random signal so for random signal you have no graphical or mathematical representation the values cannot be predicted it has uncertainty so I would I would say that you write it for yourself opposite of deterministic and you do write it all right you do write it you do write what that it it does not have any mathematical or graphical representation you write that the signal whose values cannot be predicted and it has a very great uncertainty so that would be a random signal now the example of this random signal would be a noise signal a noise signal is a random signal well it is a signal a random signal is a signal because it is changing with respect to any independent variable but but you know what we cannot predict it 
we cannot predict it, we cannot draw it mathematically, we cannot represent it graphically. That's why it's called a random signal. It's also called a probabilistic signal. Let's see if I have any other point. Probabilistic phenomena, mean value and variance are also an example of pro probabilistic phenomena. Alright, you also have a uh, mean value. You also have the variance as well. Okay, these are these are properties. They also represent what the probabilistic phenomena. I hope that the spelling is right, and I hope that the, the things that I tried to explain over here are also clear. We saw the digital and analog signal. We saw the deterministic and random signals. I believe that's all about today. I'm a little tired because of this Ramadan. You don't have a lot of stamina. I record this is the second video that I'm recording. So I cannot record more, okay? Well, I've also had days where I've recorded five or six videos a day. But due to this Ramadan, I would keep it to two. So I believe I finished this lecture over here. Now I'm a little confused in the order. You know, when you start a new course, so the order and the start is a little difficult. Now I don't know where to place this video, where to place the other video. Well, so once we go on, 5 or 10 videos are ready and uploaded and we're done with that. So we, once we get into the flow, then we'll be perfect. All right. So that's all. So I finish it here. Okay. That's all for today. See you in the next lecture with I don't know whatever it is. Till then, take care of yourselves and everyone around you. And do remember me in your prayers also. Okay. Goodbye.